What's going on everybody? Thanks for tuning back in. Uh, today I'm going to teach you about something called object pooling. Uh, object pooling is very, very useful uh, when you have a lot of instantiations and destructions going on at the same time. For example, if you have uh, an entity that fires a gun and you have to make a bunch of bullets really, really fast, an object pool is a good way to take care of this so it doesn't overload your CPU. If you only have, let's say, two AI entities fighting back and forth, shooting a maximum of, I don't know, 30 bullets every five seconds, your CPU should be able to handle it. But if you are making a game like a real-time strategy or a multiplayer game, you should use object pooling because what it does is it has objects already spawned, but they're just inactive uh, for your weapons to use. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do this in a very, very simple way, just by spawning uh, let's see either I'm either going to do bullets or just spawn in cubes randomly. So let's uh, let's get right into it So I already created uh, my object pool example um, unity uh, Project uh, all you guys have to do is just do the same thing and save your scene. I saved mine as object pool example and uh, We're gonna make a couple scripts here uh, The first script we're gonna make is a C sharp script and we are just gonna call it object pooler uh, and you know what? I'm just going to do a cube spawner just because it's really, really simple. Make a second script and just call it cube spawner. Very, very simple. So let's open up Object Pooler in our favorite IDE, Visual Studio. You can do this in Mono Develop too. It doesn't really matter. And let's take a look here. Okay, so it gives us the basic setup that gives most Unity classes here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this Object Pooler uh, an object on its own. And as I've showed you before, in other tutorials, we always make uh, a class that isn't uh, a mono behavior or a network behavior or attached to any other Unity behaviors that are uh, that come with Unity. Uh, you should always make them system serializable just to make sure there are no errors when other classes in Unity are trying to read it. And I don't think we need system collection, so we can just delete that. Now, we don't need the start or updates functions either because we're going to make all our functions custom. Uh, Another thing that you can think about doing for object poolers is making them uh, a static instance, just uh, making them only only have one per, per game. If you're just using one object pooler to spawn one item, uh, using a static ins instance is uh, very, very useful. So I'm, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a static instance. So let's do public static object pooler, and we can just call this instance. And this is how we're going to access the functions that aren't static from outside of the static class. So we're gonna have to make our constructor now. Let's make our constructor object pooler. Um, we're gonna pass in a couple things here. The first thing we're gonna pass in is the prefab. Uh, and what this is, is for example, if you have a prefab of a bullet or a cube or some sort of shape that doesn't have a script on it, this is where we're gonna pass it into our object pooler. And the other thing we're gonna need is our size. And before I go any further, let me just make all the variables that I need. Uh, I'm gonna need a list of game objects because the game object is the most common thing you will be object pooling. And we're gonna call this object pool. We're gonna make a private game object. We're gonna call this prefab. And I'm, as, as I'm sure you've guessed it, a private integer called size. So the very first thing I wanna do is just make sure that we only have one instance of the object pool running. So I'm just going to simply check to see if the instance is not equal to null. We're just going to skip this because we don't want to create a second one. We only want one object pooler in our scene. Uh, so if we successfully get past this, if this is our first time, we're going to make our instance equal to this. We are going to make our object pool equal to a new list of game objects. We're going to make our prefab equal to prefab and our size as I'm sure you have guessed equal to our size now the very first thing we have to do when the object pooler instantiates is uh, we have to give it a default size to the pool and we have to populate the pool with items so that's where our prefab and our size comes into play so let's make a function and we're gonna call this grow pool It would really help if I put a return type there. Sorry about that. We're gonna do a private void grow pool. And the very first time this class activates, we're obviously going to want to grow the pool. 
to give it a default size. So in Visual Studio, if you type in four and double tab, it'll automatically make a for loop for you. Very simply here, we're gonna make a for loop of our passed in size, and we are going to populate our object pool list with a couple of prefabs. So to make this very simple, what we're gonna do is we're going to get a temporary game object, and we're gonna make this equal to an instantiation of our prefab. So now I have a temporary object that is set to our prefab. The next thing I wanna do is I don't want this prefab to be active. I, I want this object to be turned off. I only wanna turn objects on when I take them out of the pool. So every game object uh, has a set active function and whatever you pass in, whatever Boolean you pass in, it's going to either keep the object active or inactive. So now we have our inactive game object. The very last thing we need to do is add it to the pool. So let's take our object pool find the add function and pass in temp. So now when we instantiate the object pooler, we have a standard size of, for example, if I pass in a prefab called bullet of size 100, we have 100 inactive bullets ready to go. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to create the command that retrieves a game object from the pool for whatever script is using it. And you can have more than one script using the pool uh, as long as the pool doesn't run out of size. And I'm also gonna show you how to quickly expand the pool just in case that happens. So we're gonna call this get object from pool. Uh, again, with a for loop. Uh, one, one thing I can't say when I'm coding is having these red squiggly lines here. So I'll just throw this down here for now, but we'll change that in a second. Um, instead of using uh, size here, what I wanna do is I wanna use the object pool count. And the reason for that is if I was to, were to use size here and I was to expand the pool, it would still only iterate the first 20 elements and you would have, or the first ever, however many elements you have, and it would have an infinite loop. And then your game would crash and Unity would yell at you and your computer would explode and a black hole would open and we don't want that. So what we want to do now is we want to go through the pool and see if there are any inactive objects. So objects that are set active is equal to false and we're going to return that object. So a very easy way to check this is if we check our object in our item pool, if I click dot here, Visual Studio comes up with uh, a bunch of variables for me already. You'll notice active here is deprecated. So you don't want to use that. What it has turned into is active in hierarchy. So what that means, it's actually active in the Unity hierarchy. It's essentially the same thing. But I don't want to do anything if it's active. I want to do something if it's inactive. So I'm just going to put the exclamation mark here to mean that I want the false return of this. And now that I found an inactive object, I simply want to return that object. Um, I'm not gonna set the object active to here. I wanna set it in whatever script is retrieving the object. Okay, so now we come to the point where, what if I go through the entire pool and I don't have anything to return? Do I wanna return null and in my other scripts create a whole bunch of conditionals if there's nulls? Obviously that is not what we wanna do. You wanna have your pool able to expand. The initial thing you wanna do is have a pool big enough where you don't have to, but it's always good to have this for backup. So I'm basically just gonna call the grow pool function again, and it's going to um, add however many my initial size was to the pool. It's just, originally it's just gonna double the pool in size. Uh, and it, every single time you grow the pool, it will add that many more objects to the pool. So if I start with 20, the pool will then have 40 once it hits this. And if I have to grow it again, the pool will hit 60. It's very simple. So now that I've grown the pool again, I should be able to uh, return a game object. So very simply, what I'm gonna do is I am just gonna call this function again. And since I'm returning a game object, it's just gonna go hop right back into this for loop. And hey, if 20 other scripts uh, get rid of all the game objects, it'll It'll uh, grow the pool one more time. And 20 is the example I'm gonna use. That's why I keep repeating it, so. Now there's one more thing that I wanna add to this. Usually uh, the scripts will handle turning the game object off, but what I wanna do is I wanna add a function here um, called return object to pool. And the reason that I do this is uh, I think it's cleaner if you handle everything in here. I'm just gonna pass in, I don't know, active object. And all we're gonna do is gonna connect Object, uh, active object, and we're going to set the active to false. So when you, how this is going to work is when the script 
grabs from the pool, you set it active in the script you grab it from. But if you want to return it to the pool, you simply activate this function. Very simple. So that's about it for our object pool. I don't think we need anything else. So I'm just going to close that. Now, the next thing we need to do is make our cube spawner. Now, what I'm going to do for this is every, I don't know, every 100 milliseconds, I'm going to spawn an object. And then I'm going to make it last for a random amount of time. And then I'm going to destroy that object or return it to the pool. And you will see the object pool using up items that it used before and possibly expanding, depending on the intervals in which the cubes last. So to further demonstrate, we're going to put a couple variables in here. Let's do public game object. So let's get our cube prefab. I'm going to do our public. And we should be able to access our object pooler. There it is. And following C-sharp naming, we're going to just name it the exact same thing. And let's make a public float. Let's call this spawn timer. And I think that's about all we need. I don't really need a death timer. So uh, actually, I do need the start function. Sorry about that. So I'm going to take this. And in the start, I'm going to take our object pooler. I'm going to make it equal to a new object pooler instance. And now we have to pass in two things, our prefab and the initial size that we want. Uh, let's go with our Q prefab. And you know what? Let's even add something we can add in the inspector. We'll just, we'll declare the size in the inspector. So we'll put size here. And now our object pool is created. Let's also set our spawn timer equal to time.time. .time. Now and we're gonna make our update function. And we're gonna check that if time.time .time is greater than our spawn timer plus now this right here is the interval and how how often they're going to spawn so i'm going to say every 100 milliseconds so i can show you this working very fairly quickly uh we're going to make our spawn timer equal to time dot time if you're ever making a game timer and you wonder how to do it this is the most basic way you just see if the actual time that has gone by is greater than the spawn timer plus however many intervals you want reset the spawn timer and increment uh let's say an integer called seconds or milliseconds very easy to use. Uh, so this is where we want to spawn something. So let's make a game object, temp. Now, instead of instantiating something here, this is when we pull something out of the object pooler. Now you'll notice if I take our object pooler and I, and I look around, I could use uh, the get object pool uh, function from here because this object pool is declared here. But if I was using this from another class where this wasn't declared and I wanted to grab an object from the pooler, I would not have access to this. So to keep everything the same across all scripts, I'm going to access it through the instance. And that's how I want uh, everything to be uh, taken from the object pooler class. So let's do our instance get object from pool. So, whoops. So now. We're going to take our temp and we're going to set the active to true. So now the object uh, will be active. Now, what I'm going to do just to, so they don't all spawn in the same spot is I'm just going to make this cube spawner spawn cubes in a random uh, at a random vector between negative 50 and 50 in all accesses. Very simple. So we're going to take our temp, transform, position. Oops, sorry about that. And we are going to make that equal to a new vector three we're gonna go random dot I'm sorry I cannot spell today random dot range we're gonna to go to negative 50 and 50 and I'm just gonna copy this paste it three times slap that colon on so now uh, every hundred milliseconds we're gonna have a cube spawned randomly within uh, this range right here now the final thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm going to set a death timer for each of these cubes so they disappear and return the object back to the pool. So I have to make one more function and it's going to be an I enumerator. Uh, if you've seen me use these before, what this is, is basically, uh, it's like instead of using a separate thread, it's just something that you can time. So we're going to call this destroy cube and we're going to want game object pass to it. Uh, we're going to do a yield return new wait for seconds and 
I'm going to say a random range between 1 and 10. Very simple. So what this does, it'll basically before, whenever you hit this statement inside an enumerator, whatever happens before is going to happen instantaneously. But anytime you have one of these, this will literally wait for whatever time you give it. And I've given it a random float range between 1 and 10. So it could wait 1 second, 2.3 seconds, whatever. And then it will proceed to do whatever you want it to do. And what I want it to do is... I wanted to return that object to the pool. Whoops. Return object to pool. And we're going to call it underscore temp. And there we go. So now the last thing we have to do is we have to call this coroutine and pass in the temporary cube that we created. Okay, so I think that's everything. So let's go back to Unity. And. Let's make a game object and we're going to call this our cube spawner. You don't need an object for the object pool because it's a static class that runs all by itself and it's not attached to a mono behavior. So let's take our cube spawner and add it right here. So as you can see, um, the spawn time we're not going to worry about because that's, that's going to be changed no matter what. But the size, let's start with, um, let's say 10. Uh, okay, and the last thing we need is a cube prefab. So let's take a 3D object, a cube. I know I don't want that to be a child. Drag it down to our project. It turns into a prefab. We'll just delete it here. Go to our cube spawner. Slap that cube in right there. And now let's hit play and watch the magic happen. So if I hit play, you'll see that these cubes are all being spawned. And you'll see that the object pool expanded a few times. And you'll notice that, for example, let me pause this for a second. This cube right here had a shorter death timer than the rest of these cubes. So this, this cube deactivated and now it's the first one to be reactivated again. So we should see this one, uh, it, this one's place be taken again by another active cube. So if I unpause it, yep, another cube took its place. So as you can see, the pool has expanded to a size that can now handle all the equations that I have given it. And it's now going to be uh, no stress on the CPU at all. All the objects are there and you can see them all disappearing and reappearing here uh, with new positions and whatnot. Okay, guys, that is this very fundamental basics of object pooling. You can use it for anything, whether it be ships, uh, bullets, anything that a game object is attached to, you can do it. There is just one note that I should make. And that is, for example, if you take a game object here and you were to attach a script to it, let's say, uh, add component and you had a script called bullet and you added that there and your bullet had some sort of uh, some sort of custom variables that it, it or custom functions that did to that game object make sure in that last class that you attach to that script uh, in that script on destroy function you destroy that script otherwise it will keep adding scripts to the deactivated objects and you're gonna you're gonna get bullets from the pool that have seven bullet bullet scripts on them so just be very, very careful about using scripts on top of an object pooler and make sure you destroy them properly. Okay, guys, thanks for tuning back in and I hope this, uh, I hope this video is very informative for you. We'll see you next time.